a traditional part of country life, providing revenue for some of the most remote communities. Or a cruel, outdated pastime enjoyed by the privileged few. With the return of the grouse shooting season, that debate intensified. And increasingly, it's not just the unfortunate birds coming under fire, but those who shoot them as well. Naturalist and broadcaster Chris Packham says there are strong environmental reasons to ban the largest shoots. In order to produce the grouse in sufficient numbers that they can be driven towards guns so they can shoot a large number of these birds, the land is intensively managed. It's burned, which exacerbates climate change. It's drained, which helps with flooding downstream. And then, of course, you've got to remove all of the predators from the grouse moor. Wildlife campaigners say predators like the hen harrier have been driven off the moors by gamekeepers. The glorious 12th was traditionally celebrated by the aristocracy. The first birds of the season rushed down to the capital to be served in the finest restaurants. These days those involved are having to defend grouse shooting, insisting that the moors benefit from being managed and so do rural communities. It's going into these really remote areas which have very few other forms of income, you know, a bit of sheep farming, um, but it's, it can be the real um, the, the, the icing on the cake for um, rural communities and, and then that money can uh, trickle down through the communities, through the keepers and the shops and uh, the other trades and services. 80,000 people disagree so strongly they've signed an online petition calling for grouse shooting to be outlawed. If it receives more support, the debate could switch to Parliament. Paul Davis, News at 10.